and welcome aboard in this video tutorial we're going to teach you how to create or edit a preplan on your tablet now from the main tablet screen you're going to access what we call the preplan manager now that's done from the other menu button and you can see if I click the other menu button I have a selection for the preplan manager so I'm just going to select the preplan manager at this point and our screen comes up showing uh, a blank screen at this moment but if we had any unfinished preplans that were in draft form had not been submitted to the server yet they would be listed right here in the uh, in the white space but since we don't we're going to actually create a new preplan from scratch so I'll come over here to the add new button which is in the upper right hand corner of the preplan manager now when I select the add new button you can see that I have several choices right now there are four different types of preplan surveys and I can choose the one that's most appropriate for the type of preplan that I'm trying to accomplish let's take a look at this list for a moment the first do only preplan is really only for situations where you want to very quickly create basically a placeholder preplan to which you can attach uh, previous preplan documents that you may have already had in existence before. So maybe you have old paper preplans and you've scanned those into PDF documents and you just really quickly want to get those preplans loaded into the system without actually loading up and entering all of that data into our database. The first do only preplan will allow you to enter just a very few questions that will establish the preplan with Within our system and then once that's done you can go back to the fire station and using the administrative web portal you can load all your attachments to that preplan the other three are for conducting actual preplans out in the field. You have the multi-occupant master building preplan. That's to do the preplan of a large building or facility that has multiple tenants in it. You have the single occupant, single building preplan wizard, which is uh, the one you'll probably use the most. That's for doing a standalone a business, uh, like an auto zone or a, a Burger King. And then you have the single tenant preplan wizard, which is really just a tenant space within a multi-occupant master building. Now we're going to choose the single occupant, single building preplan wizard. And the first thing you can see is that it gives me the preplanned location. Now this is the latitude and longitude that's currently being read by your device's GPS chip. So as long as you're at the location of the preplan, this should be automatically capturing the exact precise latitude and longitude of that business. However, if you're conducting the preplan at the fire station, say by entering data that you already have in an old paper preplan, here's your opportunity to correct that latitude and longitude to a more appropriate lati latitude and longitude for that business. Now you can also do that again later in the web portal, but if you want to nip it in the bud and edit that right now, this is where you would do that. And the best way to do that is simply get the correct latitude and longitude for that business by looking on Google Earth or Google Maps or Bing Maps. Now we're just going to hit OK and that's going to allow us to capture that latitude and longitude for this preplan and it'll start out with the first question that just describes the purpose of this particular preplan to make sure that you've selected the correct one. Now you're going to use these navigation uh, buttons on the right to move your way through the preplan. Let's take a look at those for a moment. You have the next button which will move you to the next question in sequence of the preplan. You have a previous button that will take you backwards in the preplan. You have a go to question button that will actual, actually bring up an entire index of all the questions in that preplan survey and allow you to uh, jump right to a specific question. 
You also have the ability to add a photo at any time. So as you're going through the pre-plan and walking through the business, and you decide you see something that you think would be worth having as an attachment to the pre-plan, you can simply hit the Take Photo button, and we'll show you that in just a moment. If you want to add or check any attachments you've already got on this pre-plan, you can hit the Attachments button. And if at any point you get interrupted where you need to leave to go on a call and you want to come back and finish that pre-plan later, you can save it as a draft on your device and then come back and finish it later. When the entire pre-plan is complete, you can hit the Submit to Server button, which will upload the pre-plan and all of its attachments to our server. Let's take a look. We'll go through into the first question and this is the street address number. So for purposes here we'll put 249. Then we hit next and that wants the street name. We'll call it Test Street. We'll hit next. Suite or unit number. In this case we'll say there isn't one. Here's the city and we'll put Mooresville, North Carolina. Now, by the way, anytime you see a question that has an asterisk or a star next to it, that means that question's mandatory. So if I attempt to pass that question without answering it, it's going to stop me and tell me that's a mandatory question. Now here, again, a mandatory question. If I try to skip it, it'll stop me. So we'll go back and we'll say this is pizza. demo purposes here. Then we can select the type of occupancy it is. In this case it's an assembly and business occupancy. Now I'm not going to go all the way through every question of this pre-plan, but I do want to point out that in some cases there are specific types of answers that you must give. In other words, a validation process. So if for instance it asked me whether or not there was a Knox box, and I uh, tried to enter a number or something like that, it may stop me and tell me that the answer did not validate. Now there are also some questions that will automatically calculate. So in this case, you see we've been asked for the ground floor width. We're going to put uh, 50, 50 feet. So we'll assume that it's uh, 50 feet. And then we're going to hit next and it's going to ask for the length. We'll put 100. And it asks for the floor to ceiling height. In this case, we're going to say it's 12 feet. And then you can see that it's automatically calculated the total area in square feet for that ground floor. Now you can edit that, but it just, uh, from convenience, automatically calculated it for you. Now later on in the survey, using the answers that I gave earlier, it's going to calculate the needed fire flow or the required fire flow for the ground floor only at 100% involvement. Uh, this is calculated by using what we call the Iowa State University method. Uh, and so that calculation is uh, already built in to the application and it will calculate the required fire flow at the ground floor. Now again, this can also be edited. So if your department uses a different method to calculate the needed fire flow, you can enter your own calculation here in place of the automated calculation. Now, let's say that during the process of performing this pre-plan, you decided that you wanted to add a photograph. Well, at any point, you can simply come over here and hit the Take Photo button. The camera on the device will automatically open up. Now, in this particular case, my device is pointing directly at the printer on my desk, so it's not a very exciting picture, but we're going to use it anyway for demo purposes. At this point, all I have to do is click the camera button over here. I can also make adjustments in turning on or off the flash and things like that, but we'll go ahead and capture this photo. And once we've captured the photo, we can either save or discard it, depending on uh, our satisfaction with, with the picture itself. In this case we'll hit save and if I want to I can type a description of that right here. So I can type in here this is a photo of my printer. And then once I'm all done with that this check mark will allow me to save that photo. If I decide I don't want to do it at all anymore I can undo that and cancel out of it. 
but I'm going to go ahead and save it and we've added that. Now if I hit the attachments tab you can see that I have at least one attachment and it's a JPEG image and it is this is a photo of my printer. Now if I decide I didn't like that uh, description I can hit the edit button which will open it back up and allow me to change the description. Now again let's say we had to leave before we finished the pre-plan maybe we got called to a run or something so we'll go ahead and hit save draft and if we do it's going to ask us for a, a name that we can save this under otherwise we come back we can't identify this pre-plan so we're going to go ahead and put in Pizza Hut and we'll hit OK now you can see that that pre-plan now appears in the list of yet unsubmitted pre-plan drafts now I go on my call and I come back and I'm ready to finish that pre-plan. All I do is come back to the pre-plan manager, double click on it and it will open back up and take me right back to where I was. So we're going to finish this question just by putting in some gibberish and then we're going to hit submit to server. Now when we submit this to the server, the pre-plan will automatically upload into the uh, server and be stored so that within just about a half hour it's now going to be available on any other device in the department. Now let's talk for a moment about how to edit an existing pre-plan that's already there. Let's say we went back to Griffin Brothers Auto Repair after a year and we were assigned to go back and update the pre-plan. Well if we open the Griffin Brothers Auto Repair pre-plan you'll see up in the upper right hand corner a small icon of a pencil and that is what allows us to take this existing pre-plan and move it right back into the pre-plan manager so that we can make changes to it. Now if I hit that edit button or that pencil icon you can see that the Griffin Brothers Auto Repair has now been loaded into the pre-plan manager and I can simply move through the questions just as if I was doing the pre-plan from scratch but in this case I can very easily simply go to any questions where I need to make a change so let's say they only changed their emergency contacts I can go in here and make a change in the phone number or the name, edit it, and resave it. So I'm going to say, okay, we're going to change this to 704-746-3795, and now resave that as a final version, or go ahead and submit that change to the server, and that pre-plan will automatically be updated to the most current information. So again, it's very simple to go back and make an edit to an existing pre-plan, particularly if the business hasn't made a lot of significant changes, simply by doing your walkthrough with the business owner, seeing what's changed or what's been altered, and going into the pre-plan and making changes in those very specific questions. Then we simply resubmit it to the server to update that pre-plan.